Okay, so today we're talking about special right triangles. Um, there are two types of special right triangles that you will encounter. The first is called a 45-45-90, which just implies the angle measures of this triangle. So we know this one is 90, 45-45 um, for the other two. And if you recall, when a triangle has two base angles that are congruent, that triangle must be isosceles, therefore these two side lengths are the same. So you have a right triangle, basically it's just the case of an isosceles right triangle. Um, now to figure out the relationship, why it's special in the geometry world, um, let's start with the general and then we'll look at some examples. So at first we'll just call this length x. And if that is length x, then this must also be length x, because it's isosceles. And then we want to solve to see what the hypotenuse is, or we're solving for c. So using Pythagorean theorem, we have x squared plus x squared, right? The square of our um, the square of our legs added together equals the square of our hypotenuse, or c squared. So if we're solving for c, we have x squared plus x squared here, which are like terms, which then gives us 2x squared equals c squared. And to solve this, you need to take the square root of both sides, and you end up with c equals, in this radical we have one perfect square here, and the 2 is not a perfect square. So when you have the perfect square that I just circled, or x squared, we can pull one of them out, and the rad 2 is just left behind. So here we end up with c equals x rad 2. Now you don't have to memorize this in particular with x's, but the, the relationship between the three sides actually becomes pretty straightforward. So let's look at a specific example in a second. Okay, so let's look at the first example. We're going to start with a triangle is shown, it's a right triangle with one side length of six. So what's cool about these problems is that they can only give you one side length and you can figure out the other ones. Um, first of all, we want to ask ourselves, does this fit into the category of a 45, 45, 90? It does not say that the legs are congruent yet, but we can determine that, right? We should be able to. We know that this is 90 because it's a right angle. We know that these two angles here are both congruent, right? Which means, again, hopefully you remember that the three angles in a triangle add up to 180. So we can say, you know, 90 plus, if we call these x, let's just say, x plus x equals 180. Or in other words, we can subtract 90 from both sides and combine the x's in one turn because you're smart kids. 2x equals 90. Therefore, x equals 45, right? And most of you probably could have done it in your head, but if not, there's the details for you anyway. So we know that this is a 45, 45, 90. So that's good for us. We know that's true, so we don't have to deal with that anymore. Now, the, now that we know it's a 45, 45, 90, the cool thing about this is that you can apply the trick. You can just say, oh, if this is 6, Right? This is congruent to this since it's isosceles, right? We know it's isosceles because the two base angles are the same. So these must be congruent, which means this is also 6. And if you forget the rule, then you can use Pythagorean theorem. Let's see what we get. We get 6 squared plus 6 squared equals, if we're solving for c here, so equals c squared. We get 36 plus 36 equals c squared. Or in other words, 72 equals c squared. Then we take the square root of both sides, and you get c equals rad 72. Now again, if you want to do the factor tree of rad 72, we're not changing this to a decimal, we're just simplifying the radical. We can do a factor tree here. This is 36 times 2. This is a perfect square, which means we end up with just 6 rad 2. So c equals 6 rad 
too. Let's so let's see how that connects with what we originally said in general. Let's see how it connects. So if we have a side length given to us here, we have x. If we know that that's given to us, all we do on a 45, 45, 90 to get the hypotenuse is basically slap on a rad 2, right? It just ends up being x rad 2 here, right? So it's nothing, it's not a huge trick. It's just if we know the side length is x, then we know the hypotenuse is x rad 2. So if we know the side length is 8, the hypotenuse will be 8 rad 2. If the side length is 12, the hypotenuse will be 12 rad 2. If the hypotenuse is 7 and a half, sorry, if the leg is 7 and a half, the hypotenuse would be 7 and a half rad 2. All right? So that makes it pretty pretty cool. You can kind of jump forward again if the leg is 6 we can just say the hypotenuse is 6 rad 2. It did connect. Similarly, if we have a triangle where only the hypotenuse is given, like we have here, we have a, again, it's an isosceles right triangle. We know it's isosceles because the side lengths are congruent. So that information tells us it's, it's isosceles. Now, because it's isosceles, it's a 45, 45, 90, so those are connected. But now, what's different here is we're given C, we're given the hypotenuse. So instead of basically slapping on the red 2, you're now just taking off the red 2. So some of you may be able to see already, since this is 7 red 2, if I just take this off, what do I end up with? 7. Right? I end up with 7, which gives us this side length. Which means this side length is also 7. Right? So that's the shortcut. Again, if you're unsure of that, you could have solved this. How would you have solved this? You would say, this is x, this must also be x, and then you would do the Pythagorean theorem. If you'd like to do that, go ahead and pause this, try that on your own, and you should end up with 